this is meteorologist Mark Molnar with your winter 2018-2019 outlook. Let's take a look across the weather factors for El Nino. Yes, this was going to be a moderate El Nino kind of winter. Let me show you exactly why. Here across the Pacific, the Eastern Pacific, there is the northern part, northern part of South America. And it's here along the Eastern Pacific, right along the equator. That is where we're going to be seeing the warming of the Pacific, and we've already begun to see it on the order of 0.4 to 0.5 Celsius. To get an El Nino, you need to be 0.5 Celsius or higher, sea surface temperature anomaly. So we've already seen quite a bit of the way of warming here along the coast of Colombia on southward, and that will be spreading across much of the eastern and central Pacific here towards the 1 degree Celsius, towards 1.25 Celsius in many areas. That's classified as a moderate El Nino. Take a look at the El Nino forecast models here. There it is, heading towards December, January, February. Models take us up between that 0.75 Celsius up to 1.25 Celsius. That classifies us as about a 70 to 80% chance of a moderate El Nino, meaning it's going to be significantly different in many parts of the country this year. Many parts of my forecast area, for instance, like Binghamton, Erie, Syracuse, were shattering snowfall records the past couple winters, while places in my southern part of my forecast area, like Harrisburg, were having major snowfall deficits. What does that mean for this winter? Well, let's take a look at for North America. The pattern, typically with a moderate El Nino, in the past, we've always seen these systems ride really high to the north as the polar jet stream gets shoved very far north towards the portions of Alaska and the Yukon. And it doesn't really enter much of the United States for the most part, maybe clipping parts of the northern New England area, but for the most part keeps those Alberta clippers and those secondary lows well away from this subtropical jet to the south. Now, the subtropical jet here across par portions of North America during a moderate El Nino typically gets pushed some 500 miles to the north, and that will keep systems riding into portions of Southern California, bringing beneficial rains and mountain snows to portions of the Sierras, well inland to portions of Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, and unfortunately, Texas here, which doesn't need any more rainfall, but Things will continue to remain the same here from Texas on eastward as we continue with that subtropical jet. As you notice, the subtropical jet kind of arcs to the northeast here just slightly, and that will keep some of those systems combining forces here with some of those weak secondary lows. If you look, though, most of them will stay well to the north, though. So that means less coastal systems here during this type of pattern this winter. Let's take a look at the snowfall anomalies here across North America. I'm going to get right into that snowfall map that you've been wanting to get into. Unfortunately, for those of you across the north from the Pacific Northwest, portions of western, central, and eastern Canada, northern parts of the upper Midwest here, the plains into the Great Lakes, and into New York, Pennsylvania, into portions of New England, we will continue with the 25 to 50 percent below normal snowfall totals. And for those of you in Harrisburg, yes, last year you were not seeing too many systems and that looks to remain the same unfortunately this winter, maybe even less snow to say the least here. So this is not for those snow lovers still getting snowfall from time to time, but we're looking at reduced chances here across the northeast towards the coastline about a 25 percent below normal so we'll still see some nor'easters but they're not going to be near as strong as we've seen here in the past and let's take a look here across the country the rest of the country we might see an increased amount of snowfall here across the southern appalachians parts of northern extreme northeastern georgia western south carolina north carolina eastern tennessee with some of those systems that are pushing across the southeast and some just enough cold air develops here we could see about 25 percent above normal for those smoky mountain areas in the southern appalachians and here across portions of the mountain regions from arizona southern california new mexico southern colorado and utah 
There's where we could see 25 to 50 percent above normal snowfall. There's the Sierra Nevadas. I'm looking for a solid 50 percent above your normal. Most areas though looking near normal or below normal for a moderate El Nino. So what's that translate? You've seen the snowfall map. What does that translate for precipitation? Now that's slightly different. I'm going to show you a difference here. It continues to be below normal across much of the north here. Here's where it becomes above normal. Portions of Pennsylvania, New York, New England, New Jersey, the mid-Atlantic. You're below normal with snowfall, but you're above normal for precipitation. That means rainfall. That means you'll be continue to have temperatures above normal but you will also have above normal rainfall. So unfortunately, this pattern continues deep into the winter weather outlook through at least January, early February here. So unfortunately, we're continuing with that. And of course, if El Nino continues to strengthen through March, we will continue with that pattern deep into March as well. Across much of the Southeast here, look at these precipitation totals from Florida, Texas, all these areas from Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, even to all the way to the desert southwest in Southern California. Some of these areas are looking up to 50 to 75 percent above your normal rainfall. And this is not good news for some of these areas that have really had a lot of flooding this hurricane season, especially the southeast in Texas and Florida here. Portions of the Carolinas as well continuing with above normal rainfall. So there's your rainfall map. I've showed you your snowfall map. Let's get right into your temperatures. Let's take a look at temperature anomalies across much of North America here. Here you have it. You've got a lot of temperature anomalies relating to right around portions of much of North America where you'll have above normal portions of Washington State, Montana, much of Canada here, the North Central Plains, Upper Midwest, portions of the Great Lakes, even into portions of the Northeast here. We're going to be dealing with above normal warmth here. So anywhere from, we're looking one, two, maybe as much as three degrees Celsius in some of these areas, which is pretty significant if you amount that over a period of a couple months. So. The key here is warmth across the north, kind of neutral here in portions of the southeast here. Um, some of these areas, especially across portions of Georgia, Alabama, portions of the Carolinas, some of you could be below normal temperature uh, as well with some of the precipitation that falls. But for the most part, across much of the country here, the key is, the theme is, is the northern part of North America is absent of that polar jet stream that's able to tap into all that Siberian, Yukon, North Pole, Arctic type air across the region. So there you have it. There is your temperature anomalies across North America. Otherwise, we're not looking, we're looking kind of neutral in many areas, but the north, there's the theme. Let's, I'm gonna leave you with the snowfall totals here across the northeast. There's the coastal areas, anywhere from 25 to 30 percent below your normal. Maybe a few coastal storms, but not as strong as in past years. And well inland here, portions of Harrisburg, Binghamton, Albany, Syracuse, Buffalo, Rochester, Jamestown, Erie, Pittsburgh, southern Ontario, Lake Ontario, Lake Erie region, Adirondacks, Finger Lakes, Catskills, Poconos. We're all dealing with about 25 to 50, right around that 30, 40, 50 percent below your average here across the Northeast for snowfall totals. Some areas even getting closer to the 60 percent below normal. So there's a moderate El Nino that's impacting much of North America. And I don't foresee it getting towards the two degrees Celsius, which would be a major El Nino. So we're going to be looking right around that one degree Celsius, which puts us in that moderate El Nino. And I'll be fine tuning this winter weather outlook for 2018, 2019 across North America. So there you have it. For all my weather, visit me, Facebook, MediaMark, Weather Northeastern, Twitter at WX Northeastern, and MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com. That'll do it for this winter weather outlook provided by MediaMark's Weather Northeastern.